Their sense of humor is dry. You have to be completely new to enter sauna and it's mixed genders. I think I stopped counting the times I've been asked if I want to sleep with someone for money. Yes, why are you so surprised by that? What does it mean? No, no. Please don't do that. Please. <laughs> Welcome back to Kate Talk Studio, and today we have a special guest from Germany. Her name is F. Morphia Rules. <laughs> <laughs> Can you please introduce yourself? Hi, my name is F. Morphia Ruhe, or just Fia, and I'm 27 years old and from Germany. I'm doing working holiday in South Korea. Thank you for coming. And uh, your last name is really hard to pronounce. <laughs> yeah. How long have you been here? I've been here for two months. You're from Germany, but you told me you are half German, half Greek. My mother is Greek and my father is German. But you grew up in Germany. I grew up in Germany, yes. I grew up in two different cities. I was born in Heidelberg and then moved to Friedrichshafen, which is in the south. There I spent my teens and then we went back to Heidelberg, near Heidelberg. And that's where my family lives right now. What was it like growing up in Germany? It has a lot of advantages because Germany is very advanced in a lot of aspects. But personally, I had some disadvantages too, identity-wise. Because being half Greek, I never really felt like I fit in with Germans. When I go to Greece, mostly for vacation, then I also don't really fit in there. Okay, so let's, let's talk about your identity. Some parts of me identify as German when it comes to how strict I am and how organized I am. And some parts of me, like my spiritual side and my emotional side, identify more with Greek version. So for me, it's very polar, like opposite polar. So you grew up in Germany, but you grew up in a household where your mother is Greek. So she probably handed down a lot of the Greek side of culture. Culture-wise or like traditions or such, we're mostly celebrated with my grandparents, like um, Greek holidays, traditions and stuff. Can you tell me an example of how culturally these two countries or these two cultures mm. are polar opposite, like you said? Germans being very efficient and on time and they don't steer around the pot so much. Mm. They just, they do it. And Greek are very uh, laid back. The good thing is they know how to celebrate, they know how to party and enjoy themselves. And that's a great thing too. But work-wise in being on time and being reliable, I think yeah, that's the opposite. They're also very, very hardworking, but in a different way. <laughs> so I, I have prepared some misconceptions or myths about Germany or German and Greece and Greek. Let's start with Germany. So Germans only eat Wurst and Schnitzel. <laughs> We do eat a lot of wurst and schnitzel, which is just meat overall. We do eat a lot of meat. Schnitzel is like a kind of like tonkatsu looking, but very thin. Would you say schnitzel is better or tonkatsu? <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh no, I really like tonkatsu. Yeah. yeah, especially the one with the cheese going. Oh. Germans will be like, no, 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 no cheese in my schnitzel, but it's really good. Germans are known to be very cold, not very social, and sometimes very straightforward, right? Yeah. They'll say they don't like you and stuff like that? Yes. yes Is that true? I would totally agree with that, yeah. Very uh, uh, to the point. I think it's also a good thing. Like, you don't have to, like, talk around the topic or anything. That's something that's very different here. Saying no or saying yes and then just meaning a, a completely different mm. thing. In Germany, it's more like, I mean what I say. And that's oh. kind of my attitude, too. And There has been a vote by Badu.com. It's a dating app. Mm -mm. But it, this was back in 2011. German people were voted the least funny people <laughs> in the world. Oh, okay. <laughs> that's that's oh, tough pill to swallow, but I kind of agree. Their sense of humor is dry and not everybody would understand it. Like sarcasm or dark humor or like the typical Gen Z humor. That's like not everybody understands it. I myself agree with it the going back and forth stuff they don't do that <laughs> another one is german roads have no speed limit germany is famous for autobahn right yes. the autobahns are highways right yes Freeways. autobahn is highway and there's no like actual speed limit mm -hmm. but there is a recommended speed limit that's what i heard 
that's not true. And I have to get this out of the way because I hear this all the time. We do have no speed limit, but it's very certain roads or very certain parts of certain highways. And the rest we do have a speed limit. It might be higher than I think in the US, for example, right. like maybe 120 kilometers per hour. It's average on a highway and then some parts are like you can go as fast as you want. But everything else, like especially like in cities, don't get the idea that we can like speed in cities. There's strict speeding rules. And another one is uh, there is sex and nudity everywhere. No, <laughs> no, no. It's not as conservative as like South Korea, maybe, or some Asian countries. But it's also not as extreme as the US, where like there's nudity just everywhere. There is certain aspects of life where I would say it's more free to nudity, like the, the bathing houses and sauna stuff. Like you have to be completely new to enter sauna and it's mixed genders. Yeah. And like nude beaches we also have. So. Okay, so have you been to the mixed gender sauna mm. and there are guys just mm. naked? Yeah. And like, how do you feel? <laughs> how do you feel about that? I personally think it's a little weird because like you might run into somebody that you, you don't want to see there. <laughs> so when's the last time you went to one of these places? Last winter. Last winter. Are those the only saunas that you have? I think there are special places or they are like special days where it's like, let's say it's a Tuesday and it says it's just for women this oh, okay. day. And then people who have a problem with that, they can go there. I'd like to visit. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> and as you probably know, Greece had a very big problem economically for a long time, right? Over 15 years, I believe. But now they're recovering from the economic crisis. There is this culture, Siga Siga mm -hmm. mentality. It means literally slow, slow, or slowly, slowly. And I think it's more of a term for just not stressing yourself out mm. too much of it and doing it in your pace. Like, you know, the, the Spanish siesta, when they have the, the time in the middle of the day yeah. where they sleep. We are Greeks also have that in summer. Oh. All the shops are closed also in oh. like in noon time. Because it's too hot? Yeah. But Greece does have winter time though, yeah. right? I read a lot of people's comments mm. where they thought Greece was always sunny and hot. Know. Right? No. It has winter. different seasons. Yeah, it has different seasons and they can be quite tough. Like winter has snow also. Mm. The Siga Siga mentality is kind of opposite to Korean because we have the yes. uh, Bali Bali. Yes. Everything happens so quickly, yes. right? Like this. They're so quick and so hardworking. It's very admirable. There's a very important question I wanted mm -hmm. to ask you since you're from Germany. Every country teaches history. Mm -hmm. From what I know, German education system, they teach the history based on factual events. They have this apologetic stance towards the world mm -hmm. for starting World War II mm -hmm. and the Nazi towards the Jew. Mm -hmm. Do you think Germans are apologetic about the past? I would say yes. I think it's important to acknowledge it, understand the past and see what kind of disadvantages other people have from it and what kind of damage this has done. So mm -hmm. there has to be a certain understanding. Just accepting the wrongdoings that have been done is extremely important and powerful for victims and right. everything that has happened. I mentioned this because you know how Japan invaded mm -hmm. Korea a long time ago, like in the 1800s, and they kept invading and they succeeded in colonizing us. And what Japanese education system is doing is they're not even acknowledging what they did wrong. And they actually glorified the invasion and they did some horrible things to not only Korea, to like Taiwan, China, and all these other places, right? But their stance is we didn't do anything wrong. It was just at that time we needed to conquer. And because of the education system, a lot of people in Japan, they actually believe that they helped Korea's economy and they helped Korean culture. What do you think about what Japan is doing as a German person? So this kind of propaganda, no matter what country does it, is in my eyes wrong, <laughs> misleading. As you said, the people who suffer from it are actually those uneducated people or like misinformed people. But I totally understand the Korean perspective of those who have been wronged and have not gotten an apology. And I totally understand why Koreans are more cons conservative and protective of their culture because they have been invaded so many times and because their traditions have not been respected, they have not been able to like live their ways. And then not getting an apology and not being acknowledged from a humanistic perspective is not right. 
I, my opinion. So Korea, South Korea especially, being a very small country, we get jabs from around the world, especially from Asian countries like Japan and China. Uh, China is claiming that kimchi is kimchi originated from China. <gasps> Okay. So it's, how did you learn about Korea? This is so cliche. But like um, K-pop or K-drama, I don't know which one was first. If it was a K-pop song, what was the song? Do you remember? <laughs> of course. <laughs> BTS was fake BTS. love. Yes. So what was the first impression when you first saw a K-pop boy band? Um, I was uh, positively surprised by the quality of the, of the content. And I was just curious because it was different. The style, like the clothing style was different. And as I said, the quality was not what I was used to. So is that why you wanted to visit Korea? When I got more into culture, I was so interested in it that I wanted to come here. Yeah, I came here for vacation for five weeks or something by myself. When you first landed, what was your first impression? I felt like a country girl, to be honest, because um, I've been to big cities before. It's not like I've never seen like a skyscraper. But here, everything is so huge. Like, it's crazy. And there's so many people. I read that Seoul is a fourth of the area of Berlin, but mm -hmm. has four times the population. population. That was very overwhelming at first. So can you share some experiences in Korea? Shocking moments, a culture shock. I was kind of shocked on how fast everything goes here. Everything is open all the time. Uh, everything is closed on Sundays in Germany. Mm. Here you can get everything everywhere so for me who's a sensitive person that was kind of overwhelming because i was like i was on 24 7 i was like i have so many things to do i want to do everything all at once i cannot stop not sleep i want to do everything so this kind of affected me then uh what was the biggest disappointment it's not a story per se but it's in general how not well prepared they are for foreigners I'm not even talking about like them being integrated into society, but just little things like I want to get a gym membership, but I cannot do that because I don't have an alien registration card or I like like stuff like this. Like I had a lot of troubles. My grandfather passed away just after I arrived here and I was thinking of going back, but I couldn't really go to the funeral because since I didn't have my alien registration card yet, I would have to get a re-entry permit, but it was not able to get it as fast because I had to go back in 24 right. hours. So I couldn't really leave the country. So this is there's so much stuff, like paperwork and, and things you have to know, and sometimes you don't know, and it's like, ugh. it would be really great if they considered our our lives a little more. Also, experience that have been very strong for me was the way I am perceived as a foreigner. I hear a lot of negative things from other foreigners concerning elderly people. I have only had great experiences. All that too much were so cute to me. They come to me and they tell me like they like my hair or they, they tell me to once I was out in the evening and she came to me, she was like, you have to go home. It's dangerous if you are alone at night. And I was like, Thank you. That's so sweet. <laughs> They've been very sweet to me. But some people have been very, um, I don't want to say this disrespectful but and just shady, unpleasant yeah shady okay just okay like getting weird requests and such can you give me an example <laughs> yeah I, I i think i stopped counting the times i've been asked if i want to sleep with someone for money really? just because i'm a foreigner like a face-to-face -face uh thing? no it was always online. online this conception of foreign people being easy to get and like the term open-minded which i'm going to talk yeah. about later too because it's like it's it's tough we had an episode of french girls mm. they talk about open mind doesn't mean open legs mm. oh yes <laughs> period <laughs> i think i can admit that as a korean guy i think we do fantasize uh having sex with foreign people especially white people i mean that's that's on everybody like do you think but i think being respectful to a certain degree like i would you go ask a just stranger, random Korean go girl to, to sleep with you for money? I don't think they would do that. So why behave towards a foreign girl that way? Online, a lot of things happen. I don't think it's mainly towards foreigners. I think they do that to everybody. No. Oh, please don't do that. Please be respectful of women and people in general. What was the happiest moment in Korea? You've only been here for two months, but out of those two months the atmosphere here of how my life is here i'm so happy here 
Yeah. I'm glad. I'm glad you're happy. I enjoy it because, as we said before, Germans are more cold. They don't, don't, they don't smile a lot. So even if I'm out on the streets in Germany, people are not very friendly. And this takes a lot of my energy. Right. And people here are very friendly and, and nice. The times where Ajumas came to me and were nice to me, or like sometimes where children came to me and they were really curious and they tried to communicate with right. me and that was so sweet. It's just so nice here. <laughs> Has anything changed in terms of your behavior or thoughts yes, yes. or ideals yeah. living in Korea? Has anything changed? I think so. I catch myself thinking in a Korean way sometimes, not in Korean because I don't speak it yet, but like the thing about age hierarchy, it's very strong here, right? And before I, I don't, and still I don't care about our age difference. If you're like one year younger than me or older than me, that, that's fine. But I catch myself asking people for their age and then being like, oh yeah, I'm older than you. Oh, so okay, okay. I'm above you. And I'm like, okay, girl, no, yeah. you gotta stop that. That's not how it works. So you kind of ask the same questions we would ask yes. when we meet new people. Exactly. Okay, okay. And like the MBTI question, always, I always ask for MBTI because I, this is a big question here too, right? Okay, so before this MBTI, we had only four types of people, yeah, blood types. What, what blood type are you? Uh, AB. You're AB. Yes, why are you so surprised <laughs> by that? What does it mean? No, no. What okay, does it mean? so AB uh, oh. is either genius or psycho. <laughs> I believe a lot of people now have heard of Korea, at least because of K-pop and K-culture. For those people that have never been to Korea, how would you describe Korea? I would say colorful which is very intriguing are like the, the palaces, the way they're colored. This is something I have not seen before. Beautiful. And autumn here, also very colorful. So I think I would just say colorful or maybe in a different term, lively. There's so much going on here. It's great. Um, I would say also humble, very humble and hardworking. If you could change Anything in Korea, what would you change? Treat foreigners with a little bit more respect. Respect, please. <laughs> yeah, being open minded. Yeah, for me, it means just being open to different kinds of concepts of life and relationships and just worldviews. But that doesn't mean like that I'm easy to get or something. So just maybe check again about this term and how you treat other people. Okay, so. You know, I seem to ask this question every episode, but there's this thing called chamanchu. It's sleep first and date later. Uh, so I believe the Western culture or European culture, they're more open to having sex and like one night stands maybe. What do you think about sleep first and date later? It's okay. I don't judge it. Like, but it depends on the situation you're in. Um, I don't think that it's my approach. <laughs> Emotions play a big role for me. Like for me, it's like the person that matters, their personality, not their gender. This is something that doesn't really work for me. <laughs> like the, the one night stand. So I want to get the person better beforehand. But I think, yeah, even Germany or Western countries are more open to kind of hookup culture and that. But as you said, I, I think nowadays it's getting more open here too. So. It doesn't have anything per se to do with your background, just like the attitude. So before we end, we'd like to ask you to ask a question to the viewers, Koreans or to Korea in general. My question to Koreans would be, would you as a Korean find the best thing and the worst thing about living here? Yeah, Fia, thank you for being here. Thanks and for um, me. Let's continue our relationship after this and um, yeah, I hope you enjoy your time in Korea and hopefully stay for a long time and share a lot of good experiences to your friends so they can come and hopefully Korea can improve in accepting more uh, foreigners too in the future. Thank you.